Good morning and welcome back to our channel. I'm Zonetta, Polish girl living in Taiwan. After breakfast, our son insisted on playing in the swimming pool, despite his fear of water. He didn't float, but instead stayed in one spot holding onto the ground. To top it off, his clothes changed color from blue to pinkish hue. Traveling with a child certainly requires a lot of patience. Today, I'm sharing our experience on Ishigaki Island, a certain part of Japan's Okinawa Prefecture. While the island has its unique charm, the experience can be somewhat limited. The town itself offers little beyond a few shrines, unless you are willing to take a taxi to explore further. If you are seeking a calm and laid-back atmosphere, this could be the perfect spot for you. We took a bus from the cruise terminal to the town center, which cost 200 yen per person, with children riding for free. Although we had more time than the previous island, it was a bit disappointing because Okinawa had so much more to offer. The last bus back to the ship leaves at 7 p.m., so it's crucial to plan your day carefully. From the bus stop, it's about a 10-minute walk to the popular shopping area. Euglena Mall, formerly known as Ayapani Mall, is the southernmost arcade shopping street in Japan. It features two parallel streets, both covered with arcades and lined with souvenir shops and local stores. There are many food options available inside. Maybe it's because we are used to seeing food and drinks everywhere in Taiwan, but it felt quite empty here. The first floor focuses more on food, while the second floor is dedicated to souvenirs. The Ishigaki City Public Market, situated between the streets, offers fresh produce and local specialties. The road felt incredibly safe, with drivers patiently waiting for pedestrians and driving at slow pace. The absence of scooters made crossing the road feel safe and unpressured, quite a contrast to what I'm used to in Taiwan. The pedestrian crossing even had sound to indicate when it was safe to cross, which made it easy to notice when the light had changed. Our original plan was to visit a stalactite cave, but my husband thought it might be too crowded, so we decided to explore the town and visit its shrines instead. In the 1500s, when Ayema farmers resisted the Shuri royal government, troops were dispatched to stop the rebellion. As the government's ships returned to Naha port, a shrine made them pray here for the safe voyage. At the sacred site, you will find a Tori gate and a worship hall. Behind the stone gate lies a restricted sacred area, off limits to visitors. The premises are adorned with Tarweri ancient trees, each with a unique shape distinct from those found in Taiwan. There were also an animal in the bushes that started me when it jumped as I approached, though I didn't catch what it was. One of the most impressive things about Ishigaki Island and Okinawa in general was the cleanliness. The streets were spotless, with almost no garbage inside, despite the lack of trash cans. Vending machines were conveniently available on nearly every street, making it easy to grab a drink. 
Unlike in Taiwan, you won't find many drink shops in Japan. We also made a quick stop at the local supermarket. It didn't have as many options as the one on the previous island, but another one was quite far away from where we were. Our next stop was Gokendo and Torinji, which were established simultaneously in 1614 to encourage the construction of temples and shrines. The deities enshrined here are based on Kumano Gongen, marking the beginning of temple and shrine construction in Yayama, and representing a valuable cultural heritage. The statues flanking the main gate of Torinji are the oldest existing wooden sculptures in Okinawa and are designed as cultural assets by the prefecture. In 1771, during the Yayama earthquake, both statues were swept away by the Meiwa tsunami. They were later discovered washed ashore, restored, and are now preserved on either side of the main gate of Torinji. Despite enduring damage from the earthquakes and tsunamis over the past 300 years, the resilience of the statues remains truly impressive. Communicating in English on Ishigaki Island was tough, and the poor internet connection made it even harder. Translation apps didn't work well, which added to the challenge. But with a bit of patience, we managed to get by. One of the challenges was finding food. Many shops were booked or closed and the shopping options were limited. Sushi train restaurants were hard to find. And when we didn't manage to get some food, it was on the pricey side. But it was truly delicious, though the food here is a bit saltier than in Taiwan. The fried purple sweet potatoes were creamy, the miso soup was super tasty, and the fish was really fresh. One option was bonito fish, which isn't typically found in this form in Taiwan. After a day of exploring, dining and resting, we sailed back to Taiwan. We arrived at 8 a.m. the next day, but disembarkation didn't happen until after 10 a.m., which extended the waiting time before we could finally leave the ship. Unfortunately, I forgot to record a video that day. We woke up at 7 a.m., knowing the ship would dock at 8 a.m. Before leaving our room, we got a call, letting us know that our passports were ready for pickup, a reassuring step as our journey came to an end. After picking up our passports, we headed for breakfast. The buffet closed earlier than usual with cleaning starting right after. As we waited for our scheduled disembarkation time of 10.40 a.m., we noticed that the toilets were being cleaned and were unavailable until we left the ship, which was a bit inconvenient. Even though we had it done a bit early, passing through customs and retrieving our luggage took longer than expected. By the time we finally walked to the car and were ready to head home, it was nearing noon. That was all for today's video. I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching. Bye!